Welcome to class. Today we're working on hip internal rotation, primarily a little bit of external rotation. But the reason we're working on hip internal rotation is because it is typically the foundation, the base layer, the fountain of youth. The more internal rotation we can gain and have control of, the less pain we'll have up or down the chain, the more movement freedom we'll have in everything we do. So let's go ahead and begin. We'll be starting with some work on our backs. So you'll need a mat. You might need a yoga block or two. Come on down. So here we are on our backs. Go ahead and get comfortable with your legs, both legs extended. And then pick up your right knee and flex the hip so that your knee is right over the hip and your shin feels fairly parallel to the ground. And then we're just gonna move through, out rushing, 10 reps of sweeping the heel in and then sweeping the heel out. Now, imagine our thigh is skewered and it's staying on this vertical stacked position. So if it helps, you can spot something in the distance to keep your knee hovering in line with as we do this. Sometimes it's easy to kind of get loose and start to flop the knee in and out as we move the ankle. Now we're driving into internal and then external rotation in, of the hip as we move through this, we want to just move through the hip. So if you feel like when you swing your ankle out, you feel yourself kind of pinch up right here or side bend or the back feels like it's working, take, get rid of that and make it happen just through the hip. Last two and one. We're doing 10 of nearly everything today. So if I get off track, you make sure you count well for yourself or you might end up doing 13, 14 by accident. All right, next thing we're gonna do is just roll to our, our left side, onto the left hip, and try to keep that right knee pointing straight up to the sky. So my hips are kind of pointed toward the wall, but up higher, they're not parallel to the wall here. Open them enough that you can get that knee stacked vertical over the hip again. Give yourself some support in the head, and then we're gonna do the same exact drill in this new position. It, it may be a little jumpier. That is not a good reason to rush. <laughs> Go ahead and move through at a, as much controlled pace as you can. If you have pinchingness in this hip flexor, you can try sinking the knee a bit and working from here just so there's more space right there. I've got five to go. And then we'll do one more drill on this side. So for me here, when I sweep my ankle out is when I feel the most pinchy work right here, this effort right here. And it is when our thigh is in internal rotation. So typically if we're needing some more range or feeling like we're not strong enough in the hips, internal rotation is where we can gain. All right, that's 10 reps for me. Final position, we're going back to our back, the first uh, position we started with before. But we're just going to start in neutral. So go down the line from you. We're going to start in neutral with the, the knee right over the hip and the heel in line, and then swing the heel out. And then from there, we're going to send the, the entire leg down or away toward the floor. So I've got a 90 degree bend in my knee the whole time. I'm going to turn back to the side. If you have yoga blocks and you could not get that heel to tap, it was just too far, or you were compensating to get there, go ahead and grab a block and set it under the target where your heel is probably gonna tap and see if you can make contact with that height object. You're gonna feel more effort here as you do that work. And I want your low back to stay neutral on the floor and also keep the ribs on the body. So as you start to reach down, you don't let the ribs flare up. You're just moving through that hip joint. I'm gonna say that a lot of times today. <laughs> I've got five to go. Ooh, and I'm feeling this fire. The more stability you can create in the rest of the limbs, the, the left leg, the right arms, or the arms and the left leg, the more control you're gonna be able to, the more you're gonna be able to recruit work in this hip. Three more. Ooh, 
And let's finish up with one more. If you get any clicking popping while we're doing this, it's okay as long as it's not associated with pain. See, there's more clicking there. So don't concern yourself with it unless there's pain associated. All right, let's switch legs. Start with the left leg starting from the top. So hover that knee and we're just gonna try to push into internal rotation and external rotation. Now this is also an assessment that um, we can use to see where your rotation is happening. See there's, if there's differences between each leg in internal or external rotation, or if there's a big difference between internal and external rotation within the same leg. Those are all uh, signs that some work could be done to, to get closer to a, a balanced uh, setup there's really no hope in getting completely symmetrical, but because we're not symmetrical beings, you know, we're, we're meant to be, we're built to be a little bit asymmetrical, uneven. This is six. So um, what you could do is translate this to standing and look at yourself in the mirror or take a video. Or if you had a friend who could shine a camera down on you, you could, assess how much rotation you're getting by taking a, a look at the shin in contrast to the line of the body. Nine and 10. Whew. And you might notice, as I'm noticing, go ahead and roll to your right side, that one side is, has a little more stamina than the other leg. So far, my right leg is winning that. And same thing, make sure your knee stays hovering above or below the same point. Um, this is another trick you could use. Just hover your finger and don't move it and make your knee stay right beneath that finger. I've got four more. And we'll go to the favorite, the crampiest of all. Last two. And you can relax the ankle if your shin's all fired up. Um, the, the ankle wants to help often and it makes a huge effort to do so, but it doesn't need to, to be active. All right, back to the back for our third and final drill in this flexed position. So um, remember if you've got a block, you can change the height of the target for what you need, or if you don't need it, you can shove it out of the way. Let's go ahead and get ready. So left knee right over the hip again. Exhale those ribs down. Take up some space with your arms. Sweep your foot out and then start to reach. Keep that right hip and left hip even on the floor, meaning don't let yourself lean to that left side. Come back up and adjust to neutral. 10, we're doing 10 of these, so nine more. Try your best not to rush it. So today when we finish this work, we'll move on to a quadrupedal position and then we'll hit for our last round 90-90 base or a seated position. I've got four more reps to go. This is a little bit of a core workout too, right? Last two. And if you don't have a block for this you're going you're gonna to be able to find something, or you should try to find something that will duplicate as that tool. A good thick book might do. Maybe The Hobbit or something. All right, roll on up. Let's get ready for our quadruped round of rotation work. We're going to move to internal rotation work and external rotation work in a quadruped position with the hip extended. So we're adding load with gravity by getting into the quadruped position. 
And we're also working in extension, which is a very valuable place to work. It's part of our gait pattern. We need hip internal rotation when we're walking, running, hiking, doing all the things. So block is useful for this, for this purpose. We are going to first just get in a quadruped position. Let's take a couple cat cows just to make sure we're feeling set up in this, in this spot. So inhale, let your belly button sink, let your ribs flare, glide your shoulder blades down your back and sort of pull your palms into the ground. And if you're probably way out of inhale now, but go ahead and exhale to your cat. Push everything away, round, 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 tuck the chin. Inhale the cow. Exhale to cat. Remember to keep, try to keep the whole hand active for this, especially when we move into our quadruped work. Those wrists are going to get sick of taking the, the whole load if, if we forget and dump into the wrists or the heel of the hand. All right. So come on back to neutral, but keep uh, yourself on the side of the cat back versus the cow back. And go ahead and kick your right heel up. Get this out of the way so you can see. Up into extension, like you're doing one of those donkey kicks. And then bring it back down. Before you go to the next rep, take a breath in. Exhale the ribs back. Tuck the tail a little more and kick up again. If you had a, a video or a picture of the side of, from the side of you, you would notice, and you can see for me, my knee is not parallel to my hip because if it were, my back is really busy trying to help here. We are again just working through the hip, so we are extending here. Once you are sure that your glute is firing and your back is calm and you're not extending through the spine, that's kind of your, your maximum controlled range. I'm going to slide a block back there as close as I can get to that max range. So the last five to 10 degrees of range are right in there. Um, you might need some more. I don't think that's going to work for me. That's not going to work for me. So you can adjust that block however you like to get that, to find that. Check that your knees right in line with your hip and shoulder and not kind of out to the side a bit. This also will help with that targeting later when we're getting fatigued because it might happen. Okay. So first things first, we're just going to try to hover our knee right over that block. So working in extension. The hands are pushing into the floor. We're working on bracing here and keeping the ribs back. And then we're going to do 10 of those capsule rotations again. So swinging the heel out to one side and then in toward the midline, keeping the knee hovering over that block. So you can kind of peek down the line every once in a while, make sure that you're still there. Five, woo, fiery, am I right? Six. We're not doing three things here. We're only doing two things in a row here. Seven. Hang on. Keep pushing into extension. Don't let that knee tap down. Don't let the heel start to walk away or pull in too tight. We want 90 degrees. Nine. Ten. Whoo. Okay. Next. Go ahead and keep the block there. Take a, rep, take a moment. I'll show you one rep and then we'll do 10 together. So we're going to set the ribs first of all, and then we're going to kick into 90 degrees in the knee, push off into extension, and then try to drag the knee around the bend until we get to as full external rotation as we can find with the shin parallel to the ground. So you're going to have to like physically look and see that it's parallel to the ground because feeling it isn't working. Usually this is where we are if we're not checking, <laughs> checking to make sure that there's exactly the same number of inches between our foot and the floor and our knee and the floor. It's easy to cheat and not realize it is what I'm saying. And I know no, nobody wants to be a cheater here, right? <laughs> so let's do 10 of these. Inhale, push into the whole hand, exhale the ribs back, tuck the tail just a bit and kick off to a hip extension. Stomp the ceiling. Now, keep the knee lifting as much as you can. Don't let that belly button rotate toward the side and drag that shin around until it feels parallel to the ground. Look with your eyes. Did you do it? Yes, you did it. All right, kick it back. Trying to lift the heel as you go around the bend. 
to back to hip extension. Now check that your knee's hovering over that block still and it's not out in no man's land. And then tap down. One, kick up. Drag it around. Keep those hip points to the, put, facing to the ground. Your right hand is going to be working hard. Keep pushing into the whole hand. Press it back around. Kick up. Find hip extension before you drop the knee down. Don't just smooth through that. Don't just race through that part. Checkpoint A, kick up to hip extension. Checkpoint B, drag that knee forward. Check the shin that's parallel and the belly button still facing the ground. C, kick back to hip extension. D, tap it down. Was that four? Okay, let's, I'm gonna shut up and we're gonna go. Here we go, kick, drag it around. Keep those ribs on the body, push it back. Five, kick and down. Stomp the ceiling, don't let that back participate. Hooey. Four more. Your hip, your hamstrings, and your glutes should be firing up. Your back should be nice and calm and quiet. No problem, right? If it is working hard, it means you've probably gotten yourself into rotation. Or you're just moving too in too big of a range. So make that, that position more modest. You're not going to fire hydrant your way around. If you are, this is seven, if you are out here, shin that high, you're definitely rotating through the spine. Um, I've been working on this for a while and I don't have the most mobile hips, but just for an example, a, a normal person's hips can do this. I'm like five inches, six inches from the floor there. Eight, holy moly, last two. Hang on hands, hang on core, keep that ribs, those ribs t buried. Nine, everything should be hurting right now. Last one. And bring it down. Whoo, nice work. Shake out anything that needs shaken out. My right wrist is tired of that. I'll give you a, a trick for that on the other side. It requires another block or some other firm surface, but we can take the, the pressure off the wrist. If the wrist is the thing, Holy cow, that is holding you back right now. All right, left leg's turn. Now that you know what's coming, piece of cake, right? <laughs> so we've got first to figure out where we are gonna be moving. Yeah, this is how we do it. <laughs> so forearm can be supported if the wrists are, are dying. You can also uh, on the left side, because the left side is gonna need more support. Also, what you could do is hold some, a couple dumbbell handles, like put dumbbells under here and just change the grip. I'll try that with my right side. So, go ahead and explore. Find what hip extension looks like on the left side first. So, take a breath in. Exhale the ribs to the spine. Tuck the tail a little bit and then kick back. That's what you're working with. Slide your block under there. Mine looks like it's going to be the same height for this side. Tuck the toes on the right foot. Get a nice stance with the, the arms, maybe you're even wider than shoulder width here, with the fingers facing out. Keep pedaling the fingers into the ground. And let's go ahead and kick up. Notice where my foot is, it's right in line with my shoulder and hip, and then we're just gonna swing the ankle and pivot internal external rotation, keeping that knee over that spot. Even on that, if you have a mark on your block, I've got a line through the center. I'm gonna try to hover my knee over that line. We've got this piece of cake. Keep that knee lifted. Don't let it tap down. Make sure you're in the last five, ten, uh, 10 to 15 degrees of range here and not, you know, short changing yourself. If we're not working in, the, in near end range, it's not doing any good. Last two or the good is much less. I won't, I won't say it's doing none. Last one. Yes. All right. Part two, you already know what's coming. We're going to extend the hip with the spine staying out of it and then drag the knee forward without laterally flexing. We're not going to let the knee and the, and, or the rib and the hip come closer together either. Let's try it. Take a breath. Exhale the ribs 
onto the body, tuck the tail, kick into extension. Glute is fired up now. Drag that knee around the bend. Keep the hip headlights shining toward the floor. Come as far as you can. Take a peek. Make sure that the shin is parallel across the floor and your, and your heel isn't kicking up higher than the knee. And then kick it back. Keep lifting as you kick back until you can see that your knee is hovering right over that block. Tap it down for one. Kick up. Drag it around. Kick it back and down. I also am using this, this camera right now <laughs> to, to check, check my form on my right knee. If I'm leaning out on my right hip a lot, that's another sign that I'm compensating. So the hip ideally stays stacked right over the knee. That means the left hand's got to work harder. Keeping up that support, that's a sign to me that I'm doing it well. I'm working in the right position here. This is four for me. Swing that knee in before you drop it. Let's go over the checkpoints again. This is five. Kick up. Drag the knee forward. Check that your shin is parallel. That's two. Drive it back. Three. Tap it down right on top of the block. Four. Yeah. This is seven. Piece of cake. We can do it. Keep those hip headlights shining toward the floor. If you aren't sure where they are, you could put yoga block on your back. This is a pretty gen a generous thing. It doesn't fall easily. Um, less generous is like a tennis ball. I can't last more than a couple reps on a tennis ball. I've got two more. Or maybe one of those squishy six inch balls like the one over my right shoulder. Last rep. Whoo. And tap it down. And we're done. Well, did you feel that? Yeah, not just in the wrist. All right, take a moment to shake it out. We're going to be in, ending on a seated 90-90 base. So at least your arms will be off the hook right now. Final stop, we are working on hip rotation in an abducted position. So we already looked, worked on it in a flexed position. Then we went to hip extension. Now we're gonna hit that middle ground right there. To do that, we're gonna get into 90-90. This can be intense, so let's go ahead and set it up and then I'll give you a couple options for changing the intensity if you need that. So start in a bear sit. And let's go ahead and drop the knees toward each other. Trailing hip, ideally you have a 90 degree angle in the groin here, and then also a 90 degree bend in the knee on that trailing hip. The front leg can do whatever the heck it wants. We're not gonna focus on it at all. So if you feel more comfortable with your leg kicked out like that, so be it, do that. Uh, if this is screaming at you right now, or if you're way over here to not have the scream, <laughs> Then I want you to get a block or some other tool and sit on it with your lead leg hip so that we're not in quite, you're not in quite as much abduction. Sometimes that requires more stability elsewhere, so maybe you bring that lead shin up um, to support, support as well, that lead knee. Now we're going to be working here. You might want something to put your hand on so that when we start to move our leg off the ground, you don't have to go like that, which is obviously not allowed in this sport. Okay, I'm gonna get back on the ground and show you the other way. So let's say you're here and you're not feeling much at all. I want you to prop a block under that opposite hand and get yourself as upright as you can and get as much crotch to the ground as you can. Sorry to be vulgar or to be, to be crass, but that is what we're doing. We're trying to basically find the, the most abduction we can in this internally rotated position. If you're still okay, good for you, wow. But you could also pull a block under that ankle, that trailing ankle, I'm gonna rotate it a little bit. So you could go to this position if it was still feeling like not enough for you. Uh, really, we won't know for sure how much you need until we start moving. That's usually the, the game changer, right? So let's, let's do that. Let's get this stuff over with. What I want you to do is address with your shoulders the, the leading leg, whichever position you're in. If you're here, 
um, and you don't have the hamstring flexibility to lean forward as much as you need, then you're gonna have to pull your heel in, but otherwise you can keep that leg out. And the first thing we're going to do is a passive range lift off with the trailing ankle. So that means the knee stays down and we're trying to get the ankle to hover about a half inch to an inch off the ground. So the amount of lean we give ourselves, we, we put ourselves in is gonna be permissible for so much lift here. So right now I've got like eight inches. I'm too far leaning forward. You might need that much if you, I'm still cramping. If you need that much, go ahead and stay there. If you, um, if you are here where I am, then keep walking the hands back until you find about a one inch set up a space between the ankle and the floor. That is where you need to be. And then take up some space, spread those hands wide and really feel it anchored. If you need a little more uh, support, you can put a block under each hand so you feel even more anchored. We are trying to build as much tension as we can through the front of the body, the front part of the body, so that this can lift off the ground without us going like that every time, okay? And the more stability we provide here, the more work we can do here. Let's try 10 reps, just lifting the ankle off the ground and setting it down. Ready, set, inhale, exhale the ribs down. Tuck the tail just a tad if you can, and then try to lift and set it down. Lift, set it down, nine. If you start to see that heel kick in or you lose that 90, get it back, and then you can also use a block to check yourself. So now I have a wall here, so I can't kick my heel in. Five to go. This is feeling really hard after all the other stuff today. Four. Three. Two. Tug on it, last one. Good. All right, don't change yet. Don't switch sides yet. We're gonna do one more thing. We're gonna build one more layer onto this and then we'll switch sides. It's gonna be a hover. So we will now pick up the ankle and then try to pick up the knee. This might require a deeper position for you. So let's play with it. We've got 10 reps to, to, to do that. Another thing you can do to check yourself is to put a new block here in front of this thigh so that when you lift the knee up, you don't accidentally, well, I'll just keep it there. You don't go like that, because that feels not as lousy as where we're picking it up from. <laughs> All right, pinchy, crampy pain is okay. It does mean there's some confusion and you can do some work in that position in the future. Uh, other kind of pain, you know, you'll, you'll be able to tell the difference, I'm sure, is not good to move into. So if it feels dangerous to move into, then you've gone too deep and I want you to back out of it. Otherwise, hang on to that cramp. Try to keep going. Ready, inhale. Exhale the ribs on the body, tuck the tail, pivot the ankle off the floor, and then pick up the knee. Set the knee down, and then set the ankle down. Same order for the next nine reps. Ankle up, knee up. Knee down, ankle down. Keep it up. Three. If, like I said, you get a cramp, try to, try to blast through it. Try to keep going. If you can't handle it, it's okay. <laughs> they suck. Uh, just try to stretch it, bang it out as quick as you can and get back to it as soon as you can. This is six from re me. If you are getting a lot of height in that knee, after a few reps, you could back it up a bit. So you make it, you bring the challenge back in. Last two for me. Ooh, too far. If you go too far, you'll know because your leg won't leave the ground. And last one. Nice, all right. What might feel good is to take that working leg, cross it over the other leg, the, the quiet leg, and just give yourself a little twist, stretch for a moment, and then we'll switch sides and finish up. Other side, so set up in your bear sit, drop the knees so that there, you have a new trailing leg, and let's get right into it. We'll consider ourselves warmed up here. Do any, make any adjustments that you need to. Keep in mind that you're gonna be different on each side. So you might need to pop your hip up on this side where you didn't on the other side. That's okay. Let's do it. Take a breath in. Exhale, anchor those hands to the floor, get some, take up some space, pull into the floor and then lift that ankle up, set it down 10 times. 
while you're there, if you didn't check before, make sure you got a 90 degree bend in the, in the knee. Check yourself if you like with a little barrier. Try to keep the ankle as quiet as you can. Five more. Four. Last three. Two. And last one. Nice. Okay, grab that other block. Put it in front of your thigh. Make sure you got like maybe, maybe a half inch space. Some wiggle room, just in case. And let's anchor up even stronger this time. Inhale, reach through the crown of the head. Exhale, pull those ribs back to the spine without rounding more. Tuck the tail and lift the ankle. Lift the knee. Ooh, set the knee down. Set down the ankle. Ten to, nine to go. Here we go. Ankle. Knee. Knee. Ankle. Eight. Check that that um, elbow on the arm you're bracing away from is not bending to give space. So make sure you're not doing that. Uh oh. I'm on six here. Check that you're not flaring the ribs as you try to lift that knee off the ground. Make just the hip responsible. Also, don't let the tail come untucked. That's another uh, rib flaring opportunity. I got three to go. Three reps, and then we're done. Two, holy moly. That same side hand is providing some good support, yes? Push. And last one. And we did it. Wow. Great work. Cross over that working hip and twist to that same side. Nice effort. Even if you um, haven't done some of the other hip classes before, this is quintessential stuff. So if you don't know where to go and you know you should be doing some hip stuff, come here, repeat this class even once a week. It's going to gradually improve your movement and your capacity and your uh, access to space and control of that space. So please keep coming back for more of this stuff. Fountain of Youth. <laughs>